Hello everyone, and long time no see. It has been several months since I filmed a video for this channel, and it's been several months since I've been consistently listing stuff too. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the pattern stuff is very much a hobby, uh, so I sort of work on it when I feel motivated to, and when I have time to, and recently I just haven't had either. <laughs> but I'm getting back into it, and I'm really excited to share this a lot with you today. I haven't counted, but there are several dozen patterns here, and these all came out of a lot that I bought from Pennsylvania. I have a video about organizing those patterns, which I will link probably in the upper right hand corner as well as down below. There were hundreds of patterns in that lot, way too much for me to show you each individual pattern. So instead I'm going to be sharing them as I list them in smaller quantities sorted by size. So today I have a whole bunch of patterns in size 18. So these are all made for 36 inch busts, 30 inch waists, and 39 inch hips. And the vast majority of these are from the 40s. There are a couple from the 50s as well as a couple from the 1930s. I have a bunch of different brands from Simplicity to Hollywood to Butterick to Dewberry to Vogue and some of the designs are just amazing so I really am looking forward to showing them to all of you. I will not be listing these all at once just because there are so many. Instead I'm going to be listing them probably over the period of about a week and I will be listing them by brand. So all of the Vogue ones will go up in a day, all of the Butterick ones and so on and so forth. I'll have more information about that link down below along with my shop and my Instagram so you can see updates. And on that note let's get into these. So I will be organizing these prior to listing them just so they're easier to sift through when one gets purchased but I have not done that yet so you're just going to see these in a random order and they have already been listed which means I have already counted them I have already sealed them up for sale they're in protective plastic sleeves and because of that I've turned off my overhead lights so hopefully there won't be too much glare but if the lighting looks a little wonky that is why so right up here is a 1940s butter pattern for a really beautiful tiered dress you can make this either with a natural waistline or drop waistline and then you can have either two flounces or three flounces and you you can have either structured sleeves or flouncy sleeves that sort of mimic the skirt. I also really love how there's this double dart detail that sort of follows the line of this wrap style bodice. It's just a really gorgeous, very detailed pattern and sort of a unique design too. There's another butter pattern and this is suit pattern and suit patterns don't usually interest me too much or sell particularly well but this was absolutely amazing. It has this basque waist at the back and then it has this flared section and then the back of the skirt is actually flared too as you can see in the line art down here. So it's just really sleek and really unique and interesting and I love how long the jacket is too. I just think it's very very striking and this one is factory folded. Here is another suit pattern and this one is at a glance less interesting but I do still really like the details of it having three darts at the front. I think that is unique and would be very flattering. This just has a gorge skirt but what's interesting about this is that it has coattails so it actually drapes down to be relatively low at the back and has a slash to the natural waist which creates the effect of tails which I think is really unique and interesting. I personally like style details that remind me of something someone would wear in a circus so that combined with the 1940s style really pleases me with this one. Here we have a factory folded one by Vogue. I have quite a few Vogue patterns for this lot and the majority of them are factory folded. This one's not dated, but I guess it's from 1949 to 1952. It is a relatively long dress with a partial button front. It has pleats to give the skirt a little bit of volume. And then it has this interesting sort of mandarin collar and then it has a lapel that flips out as well. And you can make this with short or long sleeves and also has a dicky pattern in there. More suit patterns. There are actually a ton of suit patterns in here and this is another Vogue one from the early 50s. Uh, this is for a fitted pencil skirt and then a relatively normal jacket with a double lapel or like a lapel and collar combo. So really nice, beautiful lines, just not very exciting. This one's from 1952 and instead of being a suit jacket and skirt pattern, this one is a v-neck dolman sleeve or cap sleeve dress pattern that also has the jacket. And I really love the flared skirt of this. I think it's very flattering uh, and the jacket is very cute with it as well. Another factory folded Vogue, this one is from 1952 as well. And these are some scoop neck blouses that button down the front. You can make this with an optional little standing collar and bow or no collar at all. And this has interesting princess seams that sort of extend underneath the arm side, and then the sleeve is cut in one with this front bodice panel. So that would be interesting to construct, and it is the same on the back as well. It'd be sort of difficult to construct, I imagine, but it would create some really pretty lines. And you have a dart uh, that extends sort of into that seam too. And this is either a tuck-in blouse or an over blouse, and they have it tucked in in these two photos and then as an over blouse in this one. This is a 1940s Vogue pattern, uh, just for a boxy jacket. And I really like this illustration actually, which is quite small, where they've, where they've drawn it as being bright red and paired over a striped shirt and shorts. I just think that's really stylish. Uh, and I don't love the lines of this, but I do think this could be a really practical uh, sort of coat 
coat to add into your wardrobe. And that one is factory folded and so is this one. This is just another suit pattern. Actually now that I look this one is not factory folded but it is neatly folded. And this is a Vogue special design pattern. It has a much larger lapel, sort of a wing lapel, and then that is mimicked on the cuffs which I like. And then you've got a fitted pencil skirt. This is an advanced pattern and I believe this is both missing pieces and missing the instructions so it'll be listed for a very low price. But it is a beautiful button down, very simple blast pattern from the 1950s. And you can make it with short cuffed or long bishop sleeves. This is a Dewberry pattern for a two-piece dress or suit. Uh, so this has a bias cut relatively short by 1950s standard skirt and then you can make it with the very simple fitted uh, jacket with either short or long sleeves. This is a mail order pattern for the 1930s. It does not appear to have a brand listed on the front. It might be a New York company pattern. I can't remember. This is another suit or two piece dress pattern, but these pieces are a little bit more versatile. You could definitely wear this as a blouse in addition to being a jacket. And it has cap dolman sleeves that are cut in one with the bodice. It buttons down the front and then has this really interesting tab sort of detail right here, which I like a lot. And the skirt has sort of a flounce to it. So I'm assuming the pieces are gourd, uh, but they're also cut on the bias to create that volume. So really, really nice. This is another mail order pattern. This would be from the earlier 30s. And I'm gonna zoom you in for this one so you can see the lines of it a little bit more. It has those really interesting cord panels on the sides that are pieced into it. And those are mimicked on the back and then it has piecing uh, towards the center back of the bodice as well. And there is a bowler pattern for this too, which you can see illustrated here. It isn't very vibrant. It's sort of lost the contrast and it's very tan from age, so it's hard to show on camera, but it is just a beautiful, beautiful design. And if I recall correctly, all the pieces are in here. And this is early enough and it's a mail order pattern, so it doesn't have a sheet for instructions. It just has the instructions printed on the back. This is another suit pattern, another Dewberry pattern. I love the Dewberry illustrations. They're just so vibrant and so fun, and they make me smile whenever I come across one. And this one is copyright in 1843, and it is for another relatively short, lightly flared gourd skirt, and then a jacket with short sleeves. This is a smock pattern from Simplicity. You can have it either buttoned down the front or the back, depending on your preference, and it has long sleeves and patch pockets, and a really cute little fitted yoke. I did double check to make sure I haven't shown you this one. This is just another Dewberry suit pattern. It's very similar to the other one, except this one has an option without a collar. And the collar it does have is cut as a single piece as opposed to being a collar and lapel piece that are seen together. So this one would be easier to construct. And this one is marked as being from 1944. Here's a Butterick suit pattern. Again, very simple, uh, just darts to fit it. You can have it with or without a lapel. And then it's got a relatively fitted skirt with a pleat at the front and back. So it would be easy to walk in. This is a factory folded Butterick pattern. I've actually sold a copy of this pattern before and I was really tempted to keep it for myself then and I'm still tempted to keep it for myself now. This has the most amazing saddle shoulder detail that extends into a tab at the top of the neckline. It's got either gathers at the front of the neckline and a button down back or gathers at the shoulder and a button down front. And then you can also make this peasant blouse out of it and have this beautiful smock detail on the front and the smocking pattern is included. It is just an amazing pattern and I love it very much uh, and this one is factory folded too. So it's just a really amazing find for someone who wants some amazing glasses in their wardrobe. This is a simplicity house dress or robe pattern. It has a side button closure which is sort of interesting and a wrap style bodice. And you can make this with either a narrow collar and flip out lapel or with this much larger collar. And this is actually very similar in having the wrap style. Uh, it's just a slightly different collar and this is from an earlier period. So here's the other one would be 1940s. This one's probably 1930s and I really like the details on this. I'd probably keep this but wrap dresses don't really flatter me. So hopefully you can find a good home. This is another simplicity pattern and this one is for a flared bias cut skirt and a fitted short jacket with a little notch detail at the hemline. And this is probably late 1930s. This is a 1940s pattern just for a really nice gourd shirtwaist style dress. Very simple, very easy to wear. Though now that I think about it, I think this one is missing the skirt pieces. So it's just the blouse pattern. So this one's probably gonna be listed for like $4 if you're interested. If you need something to wear underneath that, this is a slip set pattern. So you can make the full sweetheart neckline slip or you can make the half slip. I don't think this includes the bra pattern, which is sort of unfortunate, but you could probably hack together the bodice pattern from the full slip uh, to get it. This is another slip set pattern uh, from the later 40s or early 50s. This one has the full sweetheart slip. It also has the half slip or petticoat because it has some ruffles at the bottom. And then you can make a camisole out of this too. We have some more 40s suit patterns, these time courtesy of Simplicity. So this one I actually really like. It's got the band at the waist, which makes it really flattering. And then it has a lightly gourd flared skirt. And I think both of these had the copyright on them, but they've worn off. But I would guess, I would guess 1943. 
ish. And then this one has pleats at the front, which is sort of an interesting little detail. And you can make it with short or elbow length sleeve. Another simplicity pattern, this one is for either a robe or a coat. I don't know if this has any closures aside from the waistband uh, or the tie belt. Actually, it must have some sort of button closure given this look, uh, but they've definitely hidden it well. And then this is for a very cute uh, 1940s dress. So this has the basque waist and then a bias cut skirt with a seam down the front. It probably has a seam down the back as well. Uh, and it buttons to the natural waistline and has darts across the shoulders to offer shaping. And you can make this with or without a collar and with or without a ruffle. And you can have little ruffles at the cuffs too, which is super cute. This is a New York pattern for the 1930s. It is a long, relatively slim cut 1930s dress with a mandarin collar. It's got darts over the shoulders and cute little flared sleeves. And then it has a matching and it has a boxy jacket pattern with it as well that you can make with short or long sleeves. I was getting confused, so I dumped out the rest. I apologize. But here we have a Dewberry pattern. I really, really like this design. Uh, this is 1941. It has pleats down the front, and it actually has pleats that extend into the bodice, uh, which are probably sewn as pin tucks. Then the pleats on the skirt are sewn down part of the way to create more of a flattering line over the hips. You can actually have, and they actually put this detail on the cuffs of the puffed sleeves too, which I think is really nice. It's just a beautiful dress, and I I think it would look quite modern too. You could definitely get away with uh, styling this in more of a modern fashion, but just beautiful, very elegant, very lovely. And I like both designs a lot. I like it with the long sleeves and the short puffed ones. This is probably from a similar period, maybe a year earlier. Uh, it could be late 30s, early 40s. And this is a button down shirtwaist house dress, but has some interesting details. So it's got these sort of curved seams that extend from underneath the bust to the hemline. And then underneath the bust there are gathers, and then there are little tucks at the shoulder to offer shaping. Uh, you can have this with sort of a unique flare collar or just have it as a v-neck dress. And they actually have a version here that doesn't appear to have buttons at the front at all. And this version doesn't either, so they either installed a zipper or had some sort of side closure in those. But you can make this with short puff sleeves or long sleeves, and you can make this knee length or floor length. Just lots of options for either a house dress or a robe or something that you could wear out like they show down here. And Hollywood patterns are my favorite, so I'm always happy to see them. Uh, there are a few more in here, but this one is an advanced pattern for a really cute sailor style uh, suit uh, with a flared gourd skirt. Unfortunately, this one is missing instructions and it might be missing pieces too, so it's going to be very cheap. And what pieces are there aren't in the best shape. So that's unfortunate, but hopefully someone can use it and someone will buy it. This is another Hollywood pattern, and this is a true 1930s pattern. It'll turn down the brightness a little bit because the illustration isn't the brightest. Uh, so this has a bias cut skirt. It's got ruching at the center front. It's got ruching on the sleeves that mimic that. It has a v-neck, and it's just a really beautiful, elegant design. 1930s fashion isn't one that flatters me, otherwise I would totally keep this because I think it's just a beautiful design. And it would look amazing made out of like a rayon or a chiffon or a slip, uh, just really, really stunning. And I believe this one is complete, but not in the best condition. And the same could be said for these two simplicity ones. So these are both 1930s designs as well. This one is amazing. The envelope is worse for wear, but look at the details on this. I will zoom you in so you can see. Look at all of those darts in the bodice. That is just absolutely amazing. It'd be a pain to do, but it looks so good. And you can make this with a flip out collar or with no collar at all. You can have it be a button front or you can do that pin tuck detail. And then it has gores at the front to provide a little bit of volume. And then the skirt is relatively fitted at the back. Just a beautiful example of 1930s fashion. It is unfortunate that the envelope is in such rough shape though. This is another 1930s pattern. This one has fewer design details, but it's still lovely. This has a drop waist, so the waistline is actually here. And then it has a piece that goes underneath the bust, and then it is gathered above that, as well as at the shoulder, to provide volume for the bust. You can make this with the classic, very fitted uh, 30 sleeves, or the puffed one. And this looks like it has a bias cut skirt uh, to provide a little bit of volume near the hem, despite being relatively slim cut. Carrying on with the 30s theme, this is an amazing butter pattern that is still factory folded and the envelope is in such good shape. It's just pristine, uh, which is always great to see. And this is a and this is described as a house coat for women and misses with upper part of front in either two styles, sleeves, wrist, or shorter length. But I think you could actually turn this into evening gown pattern. I think it is just absolutely beautiful. It's got this arched underneath the bust, and then there's gathering above and below the bust. You can make it with puffed long or puffed short sleeves. You can have uh, either these large buttons down the front, which are very practical, or these much smaller, more decorative ones. The skirt is cut on the bias, so it even sort of has a train. It's just lovely. It's got this basque waist at the back too, which is super flattering. I just think it is amazing. I especially love 
this long night right here. Like that looks like a woman who is running through a candlelit castle at night and I'm obsessed with it. This is another 1930s design, but this one's from 1939. It is for a flared dress and a bolero. This has darts that are actually sewn from the right side of the material. So they're facing outward and you can see them. They're actually design detail. So there are two at the shoulders and then there are two across the hips as well. And this has a zipper down the back, which I love seeing because that is so much more practical and easier to get into. So I really like seeing that. And then this one has a double breasted button closure. This one's also for 1939. It has a gourd skirt with a little bit more volume. And then it does have that double breasted detail at the front. And you can make this with sleeves that are either gathered to create a puffed head or with darts for a bit of a more structured look. This is a few years later, 1941. And this Dewberry pattern has these really interesting princess seams that actually extend all the way to the hem. And then inserted in those panels, there's a pocket, which is interesting. And it's got this sort of uh, sailor style, style small lapel collar. It actually has princess seams at the back too, I'm noticing, which you don't usually see. Okay, this one is amazing, and the more I look at it, the more I want to keep it. This is unfortunately incomplete. It is missing a rectangle for the pockets, but it actually has two cuff pieces, which are also rectangles. So I think it was a factory error as opposed to the previous owner losing the pattern piece, but it's unfortunate nonetheless. This is in excellent condition, and it can be styled either to look like two separate pieces or a single dress. It's got a flared bias cut skirt with optional pockets. It's got a button front bodice with, with optional pockets as well. There's gathering above and below the bust. And you can make it with either short sleeves or long bishop sleeves. But what makes this so amazing is the hood. Oh my god, I love the hooded patterns in the 40s. I don't have any. I adore this. It's my favorite brand. It's in my size. I really want to keep it, but I'm trying to sell it. So it will be in the shop, but if it doesn't sell, it might be removed from the shop shortly thereafter. So if you want this, go buy it. Um, it is just stunning, such a great example of 1940s, early 1940s of that fashion, uh, and just a really great find. Speaking of great early 1940s fashion, this could even be from the 30s, but I think it's early 40s. This is a factory folded butter pattern with a beautiful flared skirt and a drop waist. It has a drop basque waist, actually, so it has a point at the front, and it has a seam down the front too, which would be really great for fitting purposes. It has a very flattering sweetheart neck, and it has sort of this puddle-shaped interesting sleeve piece, which I think would be super flattering, and actually it gathers inserted in the sleeve too, to almost create the effect of it being draped across the cuff. It's just a really beautiful, very detailed design design and I hope it finds a good home and that this dress ends up getting made and worn somewhere fabulous because it's a fabulous dress. Speaking of fabulous dresses, I do have a few evening gown patterns here. So this one is from Butterick and I think this one was used but in good condition or the bodice pieces were used and the skirt pieces weren't. Something like that. This is a really amazing unique design with an asymmetrical sort of half sweetheart bodice that is continued down the back. It's fitted with darts below the bust and then has this really beautiful peplum that extends across a very full skirt. Uh, you don't see asymmetry too much in the 1950s, so it's nice to see that just in general, especially on an evening gown pattern, which is so elegant. So that one is amazing. This one is pretty lovely too. This is a Vogue pattern. Uh, and again, I think the bodice pieces were used, but the skirt pieces weren't. This has a very full gathered skirt and a drop basque waist. It is it has a sweetheart neck and darts to fit it. And this looks like it'd be very simple to put together and really provide a beautiful end result, especially out of a satin or something like that. And this has a little cape that you can make to go over it too. This one I thought was so rare and amazing, but someone else actually has it listed in this size already. So perhaps not as amazing as I think, but it's still a gorgeous design. I will zoom you in for this one too, because you really have to see this detail on the bodice. It isn't just a, it isn't just gathered cuffs. There's actually this piece that sort of laps over and is seamed down the front and seams underneath the bust. So you could create a really beautiful fitted supportive garment out of this. It has a halter style neckline. You can make it short or you can make it long. It seams underneath the bust and in the center actually um, mimic the seams of the cord panels of the skirt. So just really detailed and beautiful. It also has a zipper up the back, which again is great to see. So both a very practical and very beautiful evening gown pattern. I guess I will go through the rest of the Vogue's. So this one has been used and isn't in the greatest condition, but it's a really amazing design. This is early 1940s, I would say, uh, and this is a suit dress. So it sort of looks like it is a suit jacket and a skirt if you use different materials, but it is all one piece. It has a button down at front and it has this interesting sort of Y-shaped seaming. So there is a seam right here that pivots right there. So that is a seam, and then at the back, you can sort of see it in the line art. It goes to a point at the center back too. That's really unique and interesting, and then it has a tiny collar and a relatively fitted skirt. 
And I really like how they've styled these two pieces as well with the dark colored gloves and then the veil that matches the bodice. These are two very similar suit patterns from Vogue. This one is marked as being from 1949. This one's not, so I think it's probably from 1948. And they both just have relatively fitted skirts and jackets with optional pockets. Um, this one has more darts and princess seams, whereas this one has seams that extend into the shoulder. This one has a single collar, whereas this one has the collar and lapel combo. Uh, I really like both these and I really like how they've styled both of these. As I said earlier, suit patterns aren't usually the ones that I go after just because I don't have anywhere to wear them and they don't typically sell very well either, but these are just two beautiful examples and they're both factory folded, which is great. This is another factory folded Vogue and this one is for a fitted skirt with these large patch pockets and has darts above the pockets too leading into them, which I always think is a nice detail. And it's got a crop jacket with a really interesting notched collar or lapel. This is a Hollywood suit pattern and this has really nice details. I love these two darts extending into these large pockets. I think it's really unique. And then just has a fitted skirt with a pleat to allow you to walk in it. The last suit pattern is by Vance. And I actually don't even know if this is a suit pattern. I think it is a suit. So you've got this button front jacket with a draped peplum detail. You can make this with short or long sleeves and then it has a relatively fitted skirt to pair with it. And this is just so elegant and beautiful. I love it. We are nearing the end. My dog is getting restless. So I apologize if it seems like I'm rushing. I am. This is a Hollywood pattern for a two-piece dress or an over blouse and skirt. So you have this blouse uh, with an optional roll collar, relatively simple. And then you have a heavily pleated skirt and the skirt actually ends there or the volume or the pleats do. And then there's a fitted yoke to the waist. And I'll show you the line art for it, but since it's been packaged up, the tissue is covering it. This is a simplicity blouse pattern from the 1940s. Very elegant, very simple, very lovely. Uh, you can make this with a collar and you can have a button down the back. And you can have a high scoop or low scoop and it buttons down the back. And then lastly, a very unique buttock blouse pattern with either short or long sleeves. And you've got this yoke with an overlapping detail and a collar. All right, sorry about rushing the end of this, but I have to take the dogs out. I really hope you enjoyed seeing all of these beautiful patterns. And if you'd like to buy any of them, I will have relevant information linked down below. Thanks so much for watching and sticking with me, even though I haven't been particularly active. Hopefully I will have more videos and more patterns to share with all of you very soon. So subscribe and stay tuned and I'll talk to you then.